Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's uh, definitely a, a pleasure to be up here this morning and uh, an honor to be up here this morning. For those of you that you can see behind me, the background is, is, uh, says honor. And um, I don't know about you guys, have you ever done a word study? <laughs> You're, you're def, not just look up a definition, but just digging into the word. What does it mean? And, and um, so much, so much came up when I was looking up the word honor. And um, <clears throat> I had a hard time putting it together. Like, where, where, where do I go? Where do I start with this? How do I, how do I do it? And, and I just pray this morning that God would be the one that leads me uh, in all that I did. And so if you would please rise, stand up as we read the word in John chapter 5. John chapter 5. We're going to be talking about honor. And uh, when I was asked if I, if I, if I could um, share the message this morning, you know, I thought, well, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And I've all, I, I don't know about you guys, but I love Pastor Rick and Nelda, Jenna and, and, and Natalie. I love them with all my heart. God, God has been so good to, to my family. And I'm sure you, can, you feel the same way. To, to place them and to be able to be a part of their lives and to be under their ministry and to, to hear how God works through him and to see how God works through him and how he just, he honors God. And so part of me wanted to honor him, even though he's not here. I said, this is my chance. This is my, my, my chance to honor him and, and talk about him. And uh, he's, he, he and Nelda are very humble. They, uh, they'd rather you not <laughs> lift them up. And um, the Bible tells us we're to honor those who deserve honor, who are due honor. And um, I, I, don't, I don't want to spend a great deal of a time of lifting him up because out of respect for him, I know how he feels. But I do know that I want to honor him as my pastor by honoring what he'd rather me do is honor God. Honor, honor who he honors, and that's the Lord. And so where does honor come from? What is, what is honor? And that we're, I'm hoping today that I'm able to share and, and shed some light of what is honor. Because in today's society, in today's world, I don't think we see too much of honor. I think being the youth pastor, I, and it's not our kids, I can tell you this much. But the young people today don't know what the word honor is for the most part. And even adults do not know what the word honor is or means. And so this morning, I hope through the help of the Holy Spirit, I'll be able to shed some light there of what honor is and what are we, what are we to do with it. John chapter 5 verse 23 reads, That all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent Him. Father God, this morning, have Your way. Holy Spirit, may it be Your words that come out of my mouth. May You be the one that directs us and opens our hearts, opens our ears to receive and to understand and to know, Lord God. Help us to honor You in all of our all of our ways, Lord. Help us to understand what the word means, what you desire, Lord. How to honor you. And as your word says, how to honor each other. Lord, we thank you. We thank you because you love us. And your word says you've even bestowed honor upon us. How much more should we honor you, Lord? We love you. We exalt your name. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may have a seat.
So what is honor? We all have, I'm sure we all have a great idea of what honor is, what it means to honor someone, what it means to have honor. So I went to the, of course, the internet. You know, I mean, nowadays, you know, we want to find something out. We're, we're, we're Googling, we're using the internet. So I wanted to know, what is what does Google, what does the internet say about honor? And it says, it's, it's a noun. It's high respect or great esteem. It's, to, it's the adherence to what is right or to, or to a conventional standard of conduct. In other words, his portraits, like to, to have high esteem or to have high respect, it says, uh, it gives a, uh, an example his portrait hangs in the place of honor. It's where you can see it, right front and center. It says, I must, I must, as a matter of honor, avoid any taint of dishonesty. No, it's, it, it has nothing to do with this being dishonest. It's, it's on, being honest. It's, 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 a, it's a, a standard of conduct. And then you have the verb that says, regard with respect. They honor their parents in all they did. They honor people. We, we honor people. It's, it's a verb. It's something that we do. To fulfill an obligation or to keep an agreement. Make sure that the franchisees honor the terms of the contract. You and I enter deals, contracts, agreements daily. And even with God, we, we've entered a, a covenant with Him. And so we to honor that covenant with Him. The Bible says that he honors those that honor him. First Samuel chapter two. I'm not going to read the whole story, but we we tend to as we're as we're reading First Samuel, we we we're drawn to Hannah. And her cry out for a child and how she's, she wants a child. She's been barren and she wants a child. And, and, and we're drawn to that story. But there's another particular part of that story in chapter 2. Where Eli the prophet has sons who do not honor God. They don't do what they're supposed to do. They're disobedient. They have a disregard for what God's commandments are. For what their job is supposed to be as priests. They disregard it and they don't care about what God said. They don't have any, any shame, to be honest with you. For what God has said and, and commanded them to do. We read that Eli's sons, they take part of the sacrifice from the people. What belongs to the Lord, and they take it and they 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 eat it, and they do this for a while, and finally a warning comes. In verse twenty-seven, one day the man of God came to Eli and gave him this message from the Lord: "I revealed myself to your ancestors when they were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt." I chose your ancestor Aaron from among all the tribes of Israel to be my priest. To offer sacrifices on an altar. To burn incense and to wear the priestly vest as he served me. And I assigned the sacrificial offerings to, your, to you, priest. I don't know about you guys, but God's in the details of our lives. He's called us to be different. He's called us to be separated. He's, he's given us a, a job to be different from everyone else. And as he speaks into, speak, the prophet speaks to Eli, who already knows what's being, he knows it. He's a priest. He knows what he's been called to do. He knows that, what it's supposed to be doing. Yet the prophet comes and begins to tell him what God has told him to tell Eli. And he tells him, he's detailing God, is, the prophet's detailing through God, God, through the prophet's detailing the responsibilities of a priest and how he's called them away. He's called them to be different. And he tells them, why do your sons 
honor me honor more why do you give your sons excuse me honor more than uh, honor them more than you give me for you have for you and they have become fat from the best offerings of my people God is telling them you honor your sons more than you honor me then he says Therefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I promise that your branch of the tribe of Levi would always be my priest, but I will honor those who honor me, and I would despise those who think lightly of me. The time is coming when I will put an end to your family so you will no longer serve as my priest, and all the members of your family will die before their time. None will reach an old age. You will watch with envy as I pour out prosperity on the people of Israel, but no members of your family will live out their days. The few not cut off from serving my altar will survive, but only so their eyes can go blind and their hearts break and their children die a violent death. And to prove that what I have said will come true, I will cause your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, to die on the same day. If we're looking at it in today's standards, we read this as our, seems God's a little bit harsh here. You know, those of us that are parents, we, we love our children. We do pretty much anything for our children. We, we, un, how do I say this? Sometimes we even look the other way when we know we shouldn't look the other way because we love them. And we think we're doing them a service. We think we're doing them a favor. When in reality, we're not doing them a favor. And we're not doing ourselves any favor. How serious is God about honoring him above all things? Serious enough that he just ripped the, priest, the priestly job away from Eli and his family. And he, he, he basically condemns them. He basically tells them they're all going to die and, and those that don't die, they're going to sit there and they're going to watch with envy of the good things that he does for the others except for them. And so I asked this question as, as, I, as I was studying the word honor. I was like, why don't we honor God the way we should honor God? Why is it that we, we don't talk about honor as much? Why is it that, not, and not even in, in, in the sense of, of biblical standings, but we don't honor each other for the most part as a society. It's all about number one. We tend to look out for ourselves only and what we want and what we desire and, and willing to step over whoever we, whoever it may be. So honor is giving someone special recognition, conferring honor to them. It's to regard or treat them with admiration and respect. God is God. Is God. We should honor Him above all things. We should regard Him with respect above all things. In biblical sense, the social, social term describing how people with... Uh, the social term honor describes how people in a society evaluate each other. We're literally evaluating each other daily, on a daily basis. Our co-workers, our family members, our friends, our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, strangers. We're constantly evaluating them. And we make decisions on how to honor them or not honor them just by their looks, by their position, their status their wealth. That's the most common way we honor people. As we look at them and we see a title in front of their name, we honor them because we honor that title. Or we see that there's wealth behind them and so we honor them because they have wealth. Or we honor them because they have uh, intellectual, they're, they're, they're smart and, and so we honor them. In the Old Testament, the translation of honor is kabod, while in the New Testament, it's, it derives from tameo. These terms are generally used with different reference to the honor granted fellow human beings, though in some cases they are used to describe the person, uh, uh, the honor 
a person grants God. The root word of kabod literally means heavy or weighty. The figurative meaning, however, it's we give weight to someone. When we honor someone, we give them weight or we give them a position, a status of respect or authority in our lives. That's how we show honor. While honor is an internal attitude of respect, of courtesy, of reverence, it should be accompanied by the appropriate attention or even obedience. So not only do I think it, but the actions have to come with it. And when I honor someone, when I honor God, when I honor anyone, I can, hold, I can say it, I can think it in my mind, but if my actions don't follow through, then I'm not really honoring them. Honor without, without action is incomplete. It's just lip service, as in Isaiah 29, 13, when God tells them they just honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. God is to be honored, and He's honored when we do what, he is, what, what, what pleases Him. When we obey his commandments. Another example of honor uh, of, uh, in the Bible. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 20 says. Is referring to when we honor God with, with our bodies. When we honor him with our, uh, with our bodies. What we do with our bodies. But also parents are to be honored through obedience. Of their children. I think it's. I think it's super important to emphasize here that one of the Ten Commandments that God gave was for children to honor, to obey their parents. And if you think about it, in today's society, and we're, I said it earlier, when we look around and we see what's going on in this world, there is no honor. People don't know how to honor people. People don't respect people. They don't respect things. They don't honor people and they don't honor God. They talk about God they, they, like he's, he's a nobody. They talk about each other as if they, they, don't, they don't matter. In, Bible, in the Bible, God says in the Ten Commandments that we were to obey our parents, to honor our parents. I think there's the reason being is that from a young age, you and I need to be taught to honor God. And honoring God as we, as parents, as we teach our children to, to, to obey us, as we teach our children to, 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 uh, to listen to us and, and, and follow our directions, follow our instructions, as a parent, isn't that lovely when our, parent, when our kids listen to us? Isn't that awesome when they actually pay attention to what we're saying and they do what we ask them to do? We, find, we delight in that. We enjoy that. And we don't do it just to be mean or harsh. Adi's not here, so I'll get to talk about her a little bit today. I, I tell Adi, Adi, I don't tell you things just to be mean. I don't, tell you, I don't ask you to do things just because I want you to be the one that does it. I, I, I want obedience. I desire obedience. I want obedience. I do these things so that you learn to listen. There's protection in obedience. There, there, there's, there's not only spiritual protection in obedience, but there's physical protection in obedience. If I tell her not to r run out into the street, I'm protecting her if she obeys. If I tell her not to touch the hot pan, I'm protecting her if she obeys. If God tells us not to do something, he's protecting us if we obey. There's protection in obedience. There's, there's protection in honoring what God is asking of us, you know. When knowing what God wants of us and doing what God wants of us, there's, when we honor His Word, there's a protection that comes along with it. And to me, when the Bible, in the Ten Commandments, it says, for children to obey their parents, I think that's, that's key. We start to teach our children from a young age obedience and honor. Because as they get older, let's be honest, it gets a little tougher to teach them obedience and honor, right? 
Because they begin to form their own thoughts and their own ways of thinking and, and, and their own desires of wanting to do, do things that you don't want them to do or they shouldn't do. And so they begin to begin to want to explore and maybe even not necessarily disobey, but why can't I do this? Why can't I? Or why is it that we don't do this? See, it's a lot easier from a young age to teach them obedience so that when they're older, they already know what obedience is. It's easy for them to, to obey. They've been taught to obey and to honor their parents. In, in my day growing up, <laughs> the joke was, once dad got home, that's it. If we were acting up, once dad got home, that was it. And all my mom would have to say, if we weren't listening to her, we weren't obeying and honoring my mom, she would say, just wait till your dad gets home. And it was like, okay, I'm sorry. Nowadays, I remember my dad's no longer with us, but I remember there was a respect and there was an honor for my parents. And, and I bring up my dad, especially because he seemed to be the one that was a little bit more tough on us. My mom was very tough. Uh, she was very tough on us, but it was my dad that just kind of commanded that authority. And, and when my first niece was born, his first granddaughter, I remember seeing her climbing on chairs and running around the restaurant. And I'm like, hey, where's, my, where's, where's my dad? <laughs> and he's there laughing and walking with her and enjoying her. And it's like, no, where's the dad I grew up with? The one that would be sit down and don't move. The one who was serious all the time. And, and I say that as, as, I, was, as I got older, I've, I realized the value of obedience, of honoring my mother and my father. I didn't like it, <laughs> when, it was, when, when, I was, when it needed to be. When I was younger, I didn't necessarily always like it. But I learned to, to value, to obey, and to honor my parents. And as I got older... That kept me from a lot of trouble. Not every trouble, but it kept me from a lot of trouble. And I think that's why God includes that in his Ten Commandments for us to teach our children, for children to obey their parents. And it's the one that promises them that if they obey their parents and they honor their parents, it'll go well with them in the land that they're living in. Today, when you look at at I work for Blue Bell Ice Cream, so I go to different stores, and I know you've seen it. I know you've, you've seen it not just because, uh, not just because I work for Blue Bell and visit a lot of stores. I only see it. I know you see it, but there's a lot of now hiring signs out there in the world right now. There's a lot of businesses that are hiring and looking for people to hire, and the common thread that I, when I talk to the managers, is that. Yeah, there's people that we can hire, but they don't want to work. They don't want to listen to what the manager has to, has to say. They don't want to do what's being told to them. They'll last for a few weeks, and then they just say, I'm out. Because they don't honor the job. They don't honor the manager. They don't respect them. They don't know how to obey. They've been, they never were taught at home, how to respect and honor people of authority. It's, it's, it's important for us as a church to teach our children how to obey their parents, how to obey us as parents. Young people, it's important to your life, to your future, to obey your parents and to honor your parents. Because if you can start right, as you move on and work, let, let's be honest. I'm, I'm using me as an example. I'm not perfect. 
I'm not a perfect parent. I mess up. I get it wrong. I don't always make the right choices. But God has still put me in Adi's life to rear her up, to train her up in the ways of the Lord. Your parents, they've been put in your life to train you up in the ways of the Lord. Are they perfect? No. But you're still to honor them and you're still to obey them. And you're still to to look at them and, and follow their lead. Honoring them, honoring your parents means that you're going to be obedient to what they're asking of you. Honoring your parents means that you're going to speak highly of them, not bad talk about them. Bad talk uh, about them. I know what it's like when you get together with other family members or friends and you say, you know what mom did? Do you know what dad did? That's not honoring. See, if we can get it right as young people, in life when we get into the work workplace, when we get into school, when we get into uh, other environments, it's easier for us to obey and to honor those that are above us, those that have authority over us. Look at your schools today. Those of you that are teachers, we have many, many teachers here or that work in administration. Do we see honor for most of our students? I would say probably not. We see it in certain students, and they stand out like a sore thumb, right? The ones that actually honor and obey. I have a saying, and I, li- I, I, I like to say it, and those that we hang around with hear it a lot. Say, when a, a child acts up or when they're doing something, I say, that's a learned behavior. And I jokingly say it, but I, I mean, there's truth to that. Sin is a part of us. We, we, sin is natural to us, but it's also a learned behavior. We are not teaching our children how to honor and obey. Us as parents, how do we expect them to go and honor and obey those others that are in, in authority, the teachers, the police officers, their managers, their bosses, those that are above them? God is the bestower. He's, he's the source of all honor. He's, he, he's the one who created us. And he's the one that, that, that requires and, and demands honor. And he gives honor as well. John chapter 5, 23 we read. It says, he bestowed honor onto his son, Jesus Christ. He, wa- he wants us to honor him. Jesus says, if you honor the son, you honor the father. God's the one who created honor. God's the one who, who gives honor. And he knows, how to, he knows how to give it well, better than we, we, we do. And he also gives honor to humanity, you and I. He's, it's in Psalms chapter 8, verses 5 and 6, it says, He created man a little lower than angels. In, five, in verse 5, it says, You made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. And you gave them charge over everything, putting all things under their authority. God bestowed honor to his son and God bestows honor to his creation, humanity. And so when we think about honor and we talk about honor, we've got to, we've got to understand what does it mean? What, what, is it, what, what do we have to do what, to, to understand what honor is? I think honor, personally speaking, has a lot to do with respect and obedience. Respect and obedience. God created also a, a form of, of honoring not only just uh, him and our parents, but honoring government, honoring the church, and honoring in the home, in the household. We're to honor God because he's the sovereign head of all of creation. He created all things. That alone requires honor for him. He's the creator of all things. Everything that you see out in this world, you yourself, as you the air that you breathe, when you look in the mirror, he created you. He formed you in your mother's womb. You should honor him for that. 
He is worthy to be honored. One of the ways that we can honor God is not only uh, by, by the words that we speak, but also we honor Him by honoring the purpose He created us for. Pastor the other day said we were created on purpose for a purpose. Right? We were created on purpose for a purpose. We weren't an accident. You aren't an accident. Despite what others may tell you, what your parents may tell you, or what society may tell you, you are not an accident. You are created on purpose for a purpose. How am I to honor God then in my purpose? I honor God in my purpose and whatever it is that He's set me out to do. For those of us that are already older in our profession, whatever, whatever job you're doing, whatever profession you're working in, you're to honor God in that. You say, well, I don't really like my job. <laughs> There's not a perfect job. You still honor it, though. You still work to the best of your ability. You work, for, you work as if you're working for Him, the Bible says. You honor Him because He's the one that gave you that job. He's the one that placed you where you're at. You say, well, I'm looking for another job. Well, good. There's nothing wrong with looking for another job. Guess who's directing you? A man plans his ways and the Lord what? Directs his steps. You honor Him where you're at. You do the job that you're, you were created to do. You know, no, surely I wasn't created to do this. I wasn't created, I, like speaking for myself, I wasn't created to deliver ice cream. Well, that's the job I got. How to do it to the best of my ability to honor God. Why? Because other people that are not believers, they're looking at me. And if they're looking at me, then they're looking at God. Because I call myself a, a follower of Christ, a Christian. What, am, what example am I giving them if I'm not giving it the, all my, my best? If I'm not honoring the job? If I'm not honoring my boss? Well, my boss, you don't know what my, my boss... Uh, trust me, I know. You're still to honor it. You're still to honor the position. You're still to honor the person. Doesn't mean you have to like it. But you honor them. They ask you to do something. That's your job. You don't have to like the person, but you honor the person by you being obedient. You honor the position by being obedient. You're a teacher. Honor God in that field. Teach to the best of your ability. You're a student. Guess what? That's your job right now. Honor God with it. Honor your teachers. Honor those that are above you, the principals, the assistant principals, the teacher aides. Honor them. They ask you to do something, don't disrespect them and walk away or roll your eyes or talk back to them. We're to be obedient. If God has called us to be salt and light of the earth, yet we act like everybody else, then what difference do we have? We're just like the world if we act like the world. But God has called us to honor people. He's called us to honor those that are of authority above us. In honoring those that are above us, we honor God. Because ultimately, He put us there. He directed our steps to the school that I'm at, to the workplace that I'm at, to the family that I'm in, to the friends that I have. We're to honor them, respect them. In respecting and honoring them, we honor God. One of the hard things <laughs> lately has been, just for example... How do I, I don't want to get too political here, but the president. Some people years ago, a few years back, didn't like who the president was. Some people today don't like who the president is. But you still honor the president. 
you honor who he is. You honor the office of the president. If he was to walk in into this building right now, most of us would honor him by standing up. God has called us to honor those in authority. Not only to honor them, but to pray for them. If we don't agree with them, guess what? My job is to honor and to pray for them anyway. That's my responsibility as a, as a believer. That's what God has commanded me to do, to honor those in authority and pray for them. I don't have to agree with them, but I am commanded by God to honor them and to pray for them. It's easy to honor and to pray for those that we love and those that agree with us, but those that don't, that's difficult. But it's a commandment. God commands us to do it. And when I'm obedient to God, I'm honoring God. You and I, we're God's handiwork. We're created in Christ Jesus to do good works, and to, which God prepared for us in advance to do, Ephesians 2.10. We like to say, I was created for God's good work, for good works. I, I am God's handy workmanship. I'm his masterpiece as the uh, handiwork. So is your neighbor. So is the stranger down the street that you run into. So is your spouse. So is your parent. So is your child. So is your boss. We're to honor them because they're God's handiwork. They were created to do good works as well. We're to, we're, Romans chapter 13 tells us that we're to give honor to uh, governing authority. We're to, we're to show honor not only to the powerful people in government, but to those that are around us, those that, that have some kind of authority. And I've already talked about that. That, said, that God says we are to honor them and we're to give them the respect that is due their name, but we're also to honor our families. And I was been talking about our children, our, our, our children honoring the parents, but in Ephesians, excuse me, in, in 1 Peter chapter 3, husbands are directed to honor their wives. And he says, so that their prayers will not be hindered. So if I'm not honoring my wife, my prayers are being hindered. I wonder why my prayers aren't being heard. Because I'm not honoring my wife. There's, there's responsibilities in honoring people. And when we honor people, God, God comes across and he, he honors that. And he says, if we were to honor our wives, then we're, we're, our prayers are not hindered. They're heard. And wives should honor their husbands, even if they don't believe in the word. It says, for this is the way their husbands might be saved. So husbands, wives, you honor each other. And there's blessings when you honor each other. There's promises when you honor each other. Imagine what our homes would look like if we were to honor each other and try to out-honor each other, outdo each other in honoring each other. I know my wife's listening, so when I get home, she's not here, but I know she's listening. So when I get home, I know I've got to do some honoring things in the house. Well, how do I honor my wife? I love her, I cherish her, I do things that please her. Whatever that is, cleaning the house, helping with the dishes, helping with doing laundry. She may not like the way I do laundry, but I'm helping. <laughs> and don't be doing it the wrong way, guys. We honor them when we do the things that they, they want us to do, that help, that they love for us to do. When we take them out, when we treat them special, we honor them. 
We honor them by doing that. Imagine how your house would look if you were try constantly trying to out-honor your spouse. Imagine, young people, how your parents would treat you if you were honoring your parents all the time. Imagine the things you would be able to do if you were honoring your parents all the time. Because let's be honest, most of the time when we can't do something, it's because we were not honoring our parents. Am I right? It's consequences to not honoring. When we honor our spouses, and when we honor our children, we tend to get rid of the tension that comes along with the marriage. Marriage isn't easy. Marriage is, is not for the faint of heart as they say. But when we honor each other, it makes things a whole lot easier. When we esteem the other person more than we esteem ourselves, when we value them more than we value ourselves, we honor them, I guarantee you, things will go a lot easier, a lot better in your relationship with your spouse and with your children. The Bible also tells us that we're to honor those that are in the church. It says the believer is also called to honor Jesus and those that are in the church. So as we honor Jesus, we naturally, once we, begin, we learn to honor who he is as the head of the church, an, a natural effect begins to happen. We honor other people. Why? Because we're following Jesus' example. We're letting him take over our will and our desire. When we honor Jesus as the head of the church, we're obedient to what his word says. The Bible tells us, he tells us, if you love me, obey my commandments. We're to be conformed into his image. And if we honor Jesus and we recognize Jesus for who he is, the lamb that was slain, the one that took upon our punishment, the one that said, I'll go in his place, the one that says, I t I'll take upon his sins and pay his ransom. When we realize what, God, what Jesus has done for us, when we have the right picture of who Jesus is, not, not our buddy, I've seen some shirts that say, Jesus is my homeboy. Jesus is my, my, my buddy or whatever. It's, oh, Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. He deserves. He's not one of my buddies. He's not somebody that, that I just hang out with. He's my savior. He's the one that took my place on the cross. He deserves to be honored. And honoring him is, is, is being obedient and to following his ways, to listening to his commandments and doing them. And when I do that, it sure does make a things, things a whole lot easier to honor other people in my life. Because as I honor Jesus, I'm becoming like Jesus. Paul says to be conformed to his image, to be like Jesus. Jesus had enemies. Jesus had people that didn't like him. Jesus had those that, that, wanted to, that were persecuting him. Jesus had people that killed him. Yet he still honored people. He still honored people. And he still teaches us today to honor people. True honor is born out of a heart surrendered to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I surrender my will to you, whatever it is, Jesus, that you want. In my life, whatever it is, I'm willing to do it. You honor Jesus by giving your life to him. By letting him take control of your life. Psalms 22, 23 says, You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, 
all you descendants of Israel. We have got to st stop treating God and Jesus as, a com as common or ordinary. One of the things that I hear a lot, and you may say it, and I'm not, I'm not picking on you if you're saying it, but for some reason it just rubs me the wrong way when people say, well, Diosito me va a ayudar. And I know Diosito is like a term of endearment, but he's not a Diosito. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is God Almighty. He is the one, Holy One. He's not somebody little. He's not a little God. He's a, he is the God. He's, he's not a common thing. He's unique. He's the only one. We've got to stop treating him as, as, like his, as if he's ordinary. He's not ordinary. He's the creator of all things. He's the one that gives you the breath that you're breathing today. We honor, we should be honoring him, not treating him as ordinary, not treating him as a common thing. We get too familiar with him. And when I mean familiar, I don't mean in the sense of getting to know him in Bible study. The kids hear me every Wednesday. How do we get to know God? How do I create a relationship with God is digging into his word and by praying and spending time with them. When I speak of familiar, being familiar with him, we, we just don't give him the respect that is due his name. We don't give him the honor that is due his name. We don't filter our lives through him. We take control of our own lives and we do what we want to do. And every now and then we say, well, Lord willing. Or praise God. But really, that should be every day. All the time. Whatever decision that I make, whatever it is that I'm thinking about doing, whatever thought that crosses my mind, it should be, is this honoring to God? Is this pleasing to God? What I'm about to do, is this pleasing to God? Is this the decision I'm about to make? Is this going to honor God? Is this what he wants me to do? We make too many decisions on a daily basis without putting God in the mix. We're not letting him be the authority over that decision. He's not, he's, he's not something we should just fall back on. He's the one that we should lean on all the time. We should look through it. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Alpha, the Omega. When he returns, he will be with the sword. He's the righteous one who shed his blood so that we, you and I, could live. <laughs> he's not our friend, our buddy that we hang out with. He's our God. We're to honor him in all that we do. We're to honor him. And when we honor God, when we honor Jesus, when we give him the, what is due his name, it's so much easier to honor those that, that are around us. The Bible tells us that we're to honor our fellow believers. In Romans chapter 12, verse 10, and I've already quoted it a couple of times. In the, N, in the NIV, it says, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. The ESV says, love one another in brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Yeah, but I don't like my brother or sister. I don't like so-and-so. You know what? Pray for them. Pray for them. You honor them, but you pray for them. Honoring doesn't mean you have to sit there and hold a conversation with them all the time. You have to go out of your way to meet with them. No, you honor them, you respect them, and you pray for them. You know, and prayer changes things. And a lot of times we say, well, I'm going to pray that they change. <laughs> How's that worked out for most of us? When we pray for somebody to change. Yeah, it does... Sometimes they do change, but more in reality, when we're truly honest and we're, we're truly honestly seeking God's will, when we pray and we pray for the, a person that really rubs us the wrong way or do, we just don't get along with, God begins to change us and how we feel about that person and how we treat that person. And guess what? When we begin to change, a lot of times that person will begin to change. 
because we begin to honor them because God has changed the way we feel about that person. And when you honor somebody, most of the time, they're going to see that. They're going to recognize that you honor them, that you love them, that you respect them. And if they don't honor you already, if they don't respect you already, they will begin to. They'll see a change in you and they'll have a change in, in them. So we pray for them, but not only for them to change, but we really pray because God is going to change us. He begins to change us. So we pray for all authority, as I spoke earlier before. We honor our authority. We pray for those that are around us. We pray for our fellow brothers and sisters, and we pray for strangers, those that we, we work with. Maybe they're not, they're not believers. That doesn't mean we don't honor them. That doesn't mean we don't pray for them. We're still to honor them. We're still to pray for them. When we're able to see him as he is, we'll honor others, not because we, wanted, we want people to think we're good or that we're doing a good thing, because, but we honor them because his name has been written in our hearts. We no, longer, we no longer are common or ordinary, but we have his name on us and it makes us valuable. See, when we honor God and we honor Jesus, what we're doing is we're leaving out what he's called us to do. He's, we're being obedient to him. So our name, get, his name gets written on our heart and we begin to take on his, uh, his identity. We begin to be conformed into his ways. And so it makes it easy to honor others. It makes it easier to honor others. If you're a Christian today, what makes you valuable is the name of Jesus written on your heart. Is the fact that Jesus has paid your price. He's died and, and, and for your sins. And because of what he did for you on the cross and what he did for me on the cross, our only reasonable response to do something is to do something with our lives that honors him. Romans chapter 1, um, excuse me, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It's the, what? The most, it's, it's the least that we can do is living out our life as a living sacrifice. I encourage you today, tomorrow, this week, go in and read Romans chapter 12, the whole chapter. And ask God, okay, God, how do I honor you? And begin to read Romans chapter 12. I think Romans chapter 12 is a great example of how to honor God. It speaks of how to honor others, how to love, for, how to love other people, how to, and, and what it do, just the, the changing of your mind, the renewing of your mind, how to offer your body as a living sacrifice. It's the least that you can do. It's our reasonable response for what he's done for us. He's paid a price that you and I could not pay. We're to honor him with the things that we do, the jobs that we hold, the positions that we hold. Being as parents, we're to honor him as, par as parents. He's, he's given us the, the privilege to have children. He's given us the privilege to have nieces and nephews around us, grandkids. We're to honor him in that. Be the best grandparent that you can be. Be the best uncle and aunt that you can be. Be the best mom, dad, whatever it is that you can be. Ask God to help you to honor your children. Children, ask God to help you honor your parents, honor your grandparents, honor your uncles, your aunts. We're to honor him in what we do. Whatever position we're at, whatever place we're at, we're to honor him by being the best at what we where he has us at. Let us be a people that gives, uh, gives God uh, the honor, not just with our lips, but, but with our actions. We're to honor him with our hearts because of what he did and who we are. We should show value to others and show them honor. And we're to help them see that they are valuable and that God gave his life for them. God didn't just die for you and I. He died for your neighbor. He died for your boss. 
Do they know that? If they don't know that, then that's why you're there to tell them that. You're there to tell your neighbor, Jesus died for you. The good news. You're there at your job site to tell your co-workers and your boss and show them that Jesus died for them. The good news that he took their place. Edgar, if you don't mind. We're to be living in honor everywhere we find ourselves. And even when nobody's watching. Even when nobody's around and nobody can see what we're doing, we're to honor Jesus with what we're doing. Today's world and today's society, it's easy for us to to say, I want to get alone and just be by myself and just have some me time. Have some space, a space where only me and, and me and nobody else is going to bother me. What do you do there? Does it honor God? What are you watching? Does it honor God? What are you listening to? Does it honor God? Is it pleasing to Him? Is what I'm doing pleasing to Him? Because if it's not, then I'm not honoring Him. It's easy for you and I to honor people. We have holidays that honor people. We have holidays that that honor veterans. We have holidays that honor presidents. We have holidays that honor uh, saints. We have, I mean, you name it. It's not a hard thing for us to honor people. We've just forgotten how to honor, honor people. How to respect those in authority. How to love those that that are in our household. How to love those that are hard to love. How to honor them. This world is a mess because people don't know how to honor, first of all, God or each other. It's We value more ourselves than, uh, than our fellow neighbor, than our family, and than our friends. We, we, we want more of whatever benefits us than instead of looking out for our neighbor and our friends and our family. We're willing to do whatever it takes to cr- climb up the corporate ladder. Even if that means stepping on somebody on the way up. We're willing to succeed at whatever it is that we put in front of us even if it means tearing somebody else down to get the position that we want. We're willing to do a lot of things for ourselves. Yet God teaches us differently. We're to esteem others above ourselves. We're to honor those that are in authority. We're to honor those that are above us. And most of all, we're to honor God. See, Jesus knew why he came to earth. He left his place of honor in heaven so that he could pay a price for you and I. He had honor. He had glory. He was in glory. But he looked at you and me And he saw we needed a savior. He saw that we needed help. That we were dead in our trespasses. We were dead in sin. And he left his place of honor to be like you and me. To be born in a manger. Not even a hospital like you and I were. Most of us were be born in a manger to be ridiculed to be spit upon, to be beat up to be crowned with the crown of thorns to be whipped 
to put on our sin. Because he loved you. And he loved me. He honored us. How much more should we honor him? He's done all the work. And even at that, he says, I'll call upon me. I've sent the Holy Spirit to help. He's done the work and he continues to do the work. How much more should we honor him by the life that we live? We've got to live a life of honor. Not just in these four walls, but outside in the world that we live in. This world needs to see light. This world needs to see that we are the salt and the light. They need to see an example of what it is to honor people. What it is to honor each other. Of what it is to honor authority. Of what it is to honor God. How do we do that? Giving our lives to him. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. I'm the vessel. You take the reins. You be the one that directs my steps. I'll do whatever you ask of me. I'll do whatever you want as long as it honors you, as it pleases you. Wherever I'm at, I'm your servant. Or as Paul says, I'm your bond servant. Have your way with me. Honor God in the life that you live. Honor God by being obedient to his word. Honor God by loving those that are around you. Honor God by honoring everyone. Honor Him because He is worthy to be honored. You can stand up, please. Father God, we just thank you today. God, we honor you this morning. Lord, help us to understand what it means to honor you and to honor others. To hold you in high respect and high esteem, to give you the, the praise and the honor that is due your name. To see you as you are high and seated high on the throne. To see you as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. To see you as, as the Savior, as the Conqueror, as our King. Lord, I pray your Spirit would give us that, that attitude, that character of honor the attitude to honor those that are around us. And in honoring those around us, Lord, that we honor you by the way we treat others, Lord God. Lord, and it's going to be hard to honor everyone. God, even in me, as I studied your word, God, you... you <laughs> Lord, help me to honor everyone. Help us to have a heart like yours that loves and honors. Help us to understand that we, we've been placed where we're at, Lord, in our workplaces, in our schools, wherever we find ourselves, Lord to be an example to others. To honor them, to love them. 
Your word says that we're ambassadors for you, God. Help us to represent you well by honoring those that are around us. To hold in, holding them in, in respect, Lord. To understand what you want of us, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, because... You loved us. You loved us while we were yet sinners, Lord. And yet, you sent your son to die on the cross for us. We honor you for what you've done in our lives. For what you've done for us, Lord, we honor you. We give you the honor and the glory. We praise your mighty name. Because you are worthy to be praised, God. Help us to keep a spirit of honor every day, God. And to look to you, the author and finisher of our faith, Lord God. To look to you as our helper. As the one that helps us and leads us. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus, Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. I, I hope, <laughs> it was a message that I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but I hope that we understand a little bit better what it means to honor somebody. But in honoring somebody that we honor, that we understand we honor God, and ultimately that's who we should honor. And everything that we do matters. Everything that we say matters. And so let us go out into this world, even as we take off to lunch, wherever we find ourselves, with the spirit of honor. Honoring those that are around us. Acknowledging those that we normally wouldn't acknowledge. Paying attention to those that we normally wouldn't pay attention to. Getting to know somebody we normally wouldn't know, get to know them. Honoring strangers, honoring loved ones, honoring God because we're being obedient to His Word. Thank you.